Welcome. I am Amarachi Ubani. Tonight, Southeast Governors Forum denies taking a position on the ongoing military operation in the region to discuss the issue at the group's meeting on Friday. Governors of Nigeria's northern states to hold a public hearing on the call for the restructuring of the country reaffirm faith on the Nigerian, on the United Nigeria. The federal government insists Nigeria's economy is on the right track as it applauds recent NBS GDP growth reports. It raises concerns over possible flooding in more parts of Nigeria. And U.S. airstrikes kill six Al-Shabaab fighters in Somalia. On business news tonight, Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation inaugurates eight committees to restore three of the country's refineries ahead of the 2019 full capacity utilization target. On sports news tonight, International Olympic Committee IOC awards the 2024 Olympics to Paris and the 2028 edition to Los Angeles. And from Abuja, former workers of the defunct Nigeria Airways take to the streets of Lagos and Kano to demand payment for their entitlement 13 years after the airline's liquidation. We begin tonight with the statement issued by the governors from the southeastern part of Nigeria where they have refused claims of taking a position regarding the presence of the military in the region. The governors in the statement explained that some of them, including the chairman of the Southeast Governors Forum, Governor Dave Umayi of Ebony State, have been outside the country. They have, however, cut short their mission for an emergency meeting on Friday, September 15th, to address all issues of security in the zone. The statement reads, the alleged issue of condemning the use or the military has not arisen as the governors will have to get first-hand information on both sides so that they can take definite approach towards solving the problem. The governors are set to have made contact with the chief of army staff over the clash between the military and IPOB members, while the army chief has volunteered to be at the meeting on Friday to discuss all issues with the governors. From all indications, there are growing concerns from all corners on the end result of Sunday's clash between the army and members of the indigenous people of Biafra. That attack has also opened up controversy between both parties. The controversy continues to build up by the day. And gradually, it is fast opening up a new chapter on security of lives and the unity of Nigeria. It all started with accusations and then counter-accusations between the Nigerian army and members of the indigenous people of Biafra over an alleged invasion on the compound of the IPOB leader, Namdi Kanu. I want you to report this accurately and stop relying on the lies of the Nigerian military. The army claimed it's on a routine exercise, codenamed Operation Python Dance, and denied knowledge of attacking IPOB members. Some chaps, if I will use that, who we are later identified to be IPOB members, came to, I mean, block the road and said they shouldn't pass. How? And they denied the masses, and it was peaceful, and they started throwing stones at them. Missiles, I mean, when I mean missiles, stones and things that are hard objects, to the extent of, you know, injuring a soldier on his head, and then they passed out by one lady. The group, which has since been at the forefront of agitation, disagrees with the army's claims, insisting their rights have been infringed on. They drove from that way with their blaring sirens that woke me up from my siesta I was having in the afternoon, and they went that way to that junction. They reversed, the ammo tank reversed and came back here, wanted to come in, and my men stopped them here, and instead of firing at people. Right at this very spot. And since Sunday's show of force by the military and a revolt by the iPod members, the dialogue has changed with new pages opening day after day, leaving many Nigerians to wonder if indeed there would be an end to the revolt and supremacy of power. 
the Commissioner of Police in River State, Zaki Ahmed, has confirmed an attack on mobile policemen stationed at Oyibo Junction by men suspected to be members of the indigenous people of Biafra today. The police chief explains that the IPOB members were grouped after being dispersed yesterday by the police and attacked the officers, killing a sergeant, injured two others before setting the police van ablaze and made away with the police rifle. The hoodlums were, however, repelled by the police and nine persons were arrested. He is insisting that no IPOB member was killed in the crash. Members of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, without local authority, blocked the entire Aba Potakot Expressway and attacked some residents. The timely response of the police restored normalcy and brought the situation under control as I made adequate deployment to address the situation. The mob were dispersed with minimum force, thereby restoring law and order, at the end of which 23 IPOB members were arrested. However, the command was, wake, was awakened to yet another sad incident today at about 0010 hours, where some daredevil IPOB members regroup and launch a surprise attack on the mobile policeman station at Oibo Junction, killing a police sergeant identified as Sergeant uh, Stephen Daniel attached to 19 PMF, injuring two and set a patrol vehicle ablaze. As a result of which a styling SMG rifle belonging to the deceased sergeant was taken away by the hoodlums. They were, however, repelled by the police, where about nine of them were arrested, bringing the total number of suspects arrested to 32. They are helping police investigation and will be due in court as soon as investigation is concluded. In a different development in the southeast, the Emo State Police Command has arrested a 16-year-old boy suspected of being one of the members, a major supplier of arms to the gang, the kidnapped and murdered the late Reverend Father Syriacus Onukwo. Onyedikachi Iyaka is also alleged to be involved in terrorism, armed robbery, bearing of ammunition, and trading in assorted caliber of guns and ammunition. Parading the teenage suspect alongside two others, the State Commissioner of Police, Chris Izike, disclosed 1,416 rounds of assorted live ammunition, three empty magazines, and bulletproof vests were recovered from him. He added that the operatives of the special anti-robbery squad arrested the suspects at Igbilu Awaka in Oweri, North Local Government Area, following a tip-off. Eighteen officers involved in the arrests of the suspect who kidnapped and murdered Reverend Father Onukwo have also been rewarded by the police commissioner. But the River State Governor, Nyesun Wike, is more concerned about the security of everyone in the state and is calling attention to an alleged involvement of some security operatives in armed robberies and kidnapping in the state. The Governor claims suspected operatives of the Special Anti-Robbery Squad, SARS, reportedly abducted a resident from his home in Port Harcourt. The visibly concerned Governor narrated how the individual was forced to a Fidelity Bank branch, withdrew 500,000 naira, but the three men, dressed in SARS uniforms, were intercepted by men of the IGP Special Squad after a distress call from the brother of the abducted victim. The results, this resulted in a shootout, leaving one of the suspected SARS operatives dead and a member of the IGP squad critically injured. This man fired the IG squad and they retaliated and gone down one of the SARS men. There were three. Two of them ran away, and when I looked at the picture, and if you watch that video clip, uh, video clip, you see that one of these men, this man, was in that video clip. This man was in that video clip. Now, this is the signal on the IG's office regarding this crime. And 
What you will have tomorrow is that no, it's not correct. That they are not men of SARS. I see that the most of the kidnapping and armed robbery that is taking place in this state is by men of SARS. We'll bring you more on the IPOB army crash and security issues in the southeast in just a moment. In the meantime, the members of the Federal Executive Council today said the economic policies of the Buhari administration are already putting Nigeria on the right track as evidence in the growth of the GDP. The cabinet members did not only talk about the economy at the meeting, but commended the improved remittances by some government agencies, revenue generation and recent flood warning from neighboring Niger Republic. The meeting was presided over by President Muhammadu Buhari. Our correspondent, Ibrahim Adra, reports. The meeting started at about 11 a.m., lasting about four hours. Among the federal ministers of the meeting was Aisha Al-Hassan of the Ministry of Women Affairs and Social Development, whose comments regarding the 2019 elections set tongue wagging across the country. The council, however, focused on the recent report released by the National Bureau of Statistics, suggesting the country has climbed out of recession. With the GDP growing in the positive direction for the first time in five quarters, government says a lot more needs to be done. We realize that the growth is very, very small. It's not a growth that has impact. It is just shows us that we are in the right direction, but the growth is yet to have the kind of impact which we would like. And because we have a population growing at 3%, Anything less than 3% is not likely to be impactful. On its drive to show up revenue, the council is happy with the Joint Admission and Matriculation Board, which it says has remitted money said to be the highest amount in 40 years. So far they have done 5 billion, and the Minister of Education reported that they have an additional 3 billion that they're ready to remit, which will take this year's figure alone to 8 billion. Now, they have not increased their charges, they have not increased their fees. So the question that FEC and council members were asking is where was all this money before? So the directive was given that we must call those who were the heads of those agencies and similar ones to account. And that's the direction that we've been given and that's what we intend to do. The meeting will prove for Nigeria to join the Africa Trade Insurance Agency, an A-rated regional body set to provide long-term risk guarantees. The council is also taking seriously the warning from authorities in Niger Republic on possible flooding. The good thing is that we Already the federal government is keeping an eye on its two observations veterans in Niamey and Lokoja, which it says are providing information by the minute in real time. We are monitoring the situation if there is any indication that there is going to be a significant rise or it's going to get to an emergency situation, we will be able to uh, give an early warning uh, uh, to NEMA and uh, NEMA is poised also to inform the affected states. Uh, the riparian states along the river Niger, particularly Kogi, Anambra, uh, the Delta, down to Bielsa and, uh, and rivers. The desire of government in this regard is to avert flooding like the Benue incidents that washed away properties and left many citizens without shelter. From the presidential villa in Abuja, Ibrahim Adra, Channels Television News. In part two after the break, Chief Justice of Nigeria pledges support for the federal government in its anti-corruption fight. Please stay with us.